that Brian's been in an accident. He's in critical condition. And I proceeded to just say <clears throat> no, no. And on my third no, I'd find myself on my knees. Never felt so hopeless in my life. News for your health tonight, the story of Brian Boyle's triumph, a local young man who beat all the odds. An athlete by nature, he fought to stay alive. His heart and soul fed by his family, doctors, and the blood from dozens of strangers who helped to save his life. He didn't just flirt with death. Technically, he was dead mm -hmm. on several different occasions. Brian was crossing an intersection near his home when a dump truck smashed into the side of his car. When rescue workers arrived on the scene, they assumed that this accident was a fatal one. It nearly was. Brian lost 60% of his blood. Doctors didn't think he'd make it. So certain of the outcome, people referred to his hospital room as his deathbed. I was taking him back to surgery the fourth or fifth time. One of the intensivists came and whispered in my ears, what's wrong with you? You're operating on ca cadavers now. What's this? I said, he's not a cadaver. His blood pressure is 70, 80, and he has a pulse. The impact shook Brian's heart to the other side of his body. In all honesty, I did not think he would make it because it's one of the worst traumas I've seen. And I've done this for a little more than 15 years. He was pretty much hanging by a thread uh, that he could pass away at any time. It was unbelievable because I don't think there's any greater torture in life than watching your child suffer. I just wanted to have my little boy back. Any, any way I could get him back. I told my wife, I said, I think, you know, Brian's given up and he's gonna go away from us now. So on the second visit, I, I gave him a pep talk. I had to tell him that, that he was the only thing we had in our lives. With a renewed spirit, Brian turned his focus to rehabilitating his broken body. No squeezing a towel, squeezing this foam ball, um, shaking a hand, blinking. Mm -hmm. Small things like that were like these big monumental events taking place. It took months of intense rehab, but Brian did what was once unthinkable. It is a 2.4 mile swim, then a 112 mile bike ride. And then a 26.2 mile marathon. And pray that he does finish. I know he's not going to win, but it's not about the winning with him. If he can just get through it, it'd be the ultimate probably for me. The ultimate confirmation that Brian's back. Walking is even difficult now. But suddenly from that comes running. Think of how much he wants what comes at the finish. can go on with their lives. Their boy is back. The cover of a magazine. They're on Ellen. See why everyone's talking about Brian Boyle. <laughs> Don't you have to train for years and years for an Iron Man? Cup? You're supposed to. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to, but um How long did you train for? For uh for Kona last year at a World Championship I trained for about a little over six weeks. How long is a triathlon about? It's about 140.6 miles, and you have a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride in the lava desert in Kona, and got the 26.2 mile marathon. It's swim, bike, run, it's everything. A lot of things, yeah. It's a lot of things. <laughs> they should add more to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Story of a miraculous recovery. Brian has written a great book called Ironheart, the true story of how I came back from the dead.
once you got through the darkest days um, and you knew that you had survived, I think people would have been happy just to see you just sitting walking, upright yeah. and walking. walking. That was yeah. good. That was Much good. less doing what you ultimately did. The amazing survival story of Brian Boyle. Now, the national face for the Red Cross, asking for your donation at a time when blood supplies are dangerously low. Brian is the face of a new national campaign launched right here in Baltimore. He's alive today because of blood donations, and now he wants you to step up. Make a life-saving Red Cross blood donation and help give someone a chance at tomorrow. I was told that I had 36 blood transfusions, and I had 13 uh, plasma treatments. So there's like, it's not just me, it, I'm... I'm I'm a whole team right here. I lived up to the promise that I made when I was in rehab and happily joined forces with the American Red Cross and have been working very closely with them for the past four years. I spend most of my time now training for competitions and I spend most of my free time volunteering to support the American Red Cross and encourage people to donate blood. A lot of people ask me about my support of blood donations because I always wear a Red Cross logo on the front and back of my race suit during competitions. This is a tribute to the anonymous blood donors that helped save me. I find encouraging blood donations to be the best way I'm able to give back and help other patients in need. Working with the Red Cross has been such a blessing to be able to give back and, and help. The, to see the proof of it, to see the, the, the actual effects of it, it, it is so rewarding and so meaningful and it can definitely be a challenge. Every day is a challenge because you have these goals that you want to you know, reach and, and things you want to fulfill and the impact that is made, it's not just affecting numbers, it's affecting people. And the people have backgrounds, they have families, they have, they're, you know, they have lives, and the impact that is being made is, is saving people. It's, it's saving hopes for the future. It's saving families, saving communities, and that's the result. To help others in need, that's, that's the best way to go about it all, and the impact is always there. Everyone has a story. Everyone has an experience, and to kind of focus on that, reflect on that sometimes when the numbers and, and different goals are kind of being in, in the, on the pedestal of things, it's always good to think about the actual everlasting impact, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm saying thank you, because I like to show the appreciation and represent just because my background and experiences have given me that ability to, to look back and say thank you. So, in any arena, it's all about the good that you do. Brian's story is so compelling. Uh, his message is so important. There's a very real need and there's a very immediate need uh, for patients like Brian. And his story is a great example of just how important every donation can be. Do you ever stop and think, why did this happen to me? Why did I have to go through this? Maybe there is a reason behind this. Maybe I was meant to have the story where I can have that kind of impact. And if it's through the Red Cross, well, then it's all worthwhile. His name is Brian Boyle, but to those he inspires every day, he's known as Iron Heart. Mama, she says, she says, she says, she says,